Okay, so uh, I guess I can start. It's a time. Uh, so I will next 40 minutes will um, dive a bit in the resilience microservice design um, using Apache 6, uh, CARA, ActiveMQ, and some other technologies. So basically, it's about uh, uh, about the basics of uh, design resilience microservices and about resilience. Um, so my presentation will contain some some parts. Uh, in the first, I, I will start with um, describing the real case happens some years ago with uh, customer projects in e-commerce. So it was the outage of uh, e-commerce shop and just analyze the reason what really happens. So perhaps you have ideas as well, you can share it. Uh, we make some formal definition of stability, go through the stability anti-patterns and stability patterns, and make some conclusion and lesson learned. Uh, shortly about me, I am work as a software architect in a talent team. So talent produce uh, some products based on the open source Apache projects. And uh, I'm also a bit involved in the Apache community. I'm a PMC in Apache 6 and make some contribution in Apache Syncope areas and Apache Cara. So as you can see, uh, the most of uh, time I was uh, as a technical person, so software engineer, software developer, and a team lead. But in one project, so with exactly with e-commerce customer, I um, also should be a bit DevOps. So I care also about the deployments, about production system, about the uh, outages, uh, failures. And the first impression was, was like this. Uh, was, uh, uh, it's really hard to work under pressure because uh, every minute, so every second, every minute of outage the shop it costs a lot of money. Uh, so we have a lot of pressure if um, some 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 failure and some some uh, bug really prevents a customer to buy in the shop. And um, uh, to fix and to find a problem under this pressure was psychologically very very hard for me to be honest. Therefore, I thought a bit in the direction how to either ways to um, make your system more or less uh, robust or more reliable to react on the on the fail. Um, so I just start with uh, one case happens um, some years ago, exactly in this with a customer. Just describe a little bit uh, architecture of the system. It was a web web shop with a front end, uh, web based front end, uh, so web browser. Uh, uh, front end uh, is implemented by JavaScript and access uh, REST API, the backend, backend, uh, backend uh, access uh, SAP, some data storages with a document oriented and SQL database. Also use actively messaging, Q messaging, and access some uh, online uh, finance and credit business system. Itself inside the middleware was implemented as microservices and uh, every uh, bounded context contains three parts as a, a kind of facade that uh, has a task to orchestrate result of the core service, the marketplace service, core service is responsible to care okay, about products inside the, uh, uh, the own products, basically for e-commerce provider, and marketplace case about products uh, in the uh, other sellers who use platform to sell own products. Uh, both of the marketplace, even even facade, but marketplace service and core service has some asynchronous operation. And the sender publish something in the, in the queue and listen. I just listen. For example, if you commit the order, it's not necessary to wait um, synchronously for the response. You can return immediately the result uh, for the customer and say yes, uh, order is accepted. And internal processing happens through the asynchronous queue. Uh, and uh, one day, one uh, early morning, I was responsible to deploy uh, the updates in the core order uh, service. So just normal production deployment. And we have a kind of monitoring, uh, this name uptrends is a kind of semantic, uh, synthetic monitoring that they produce uh, uh, user, user make a fake uh, order, so add something to the cart and go through the whole system. 
and see the result. And uh, this is quite quite a good quality of monitoring. That if, if this process fails, there's something wrong with the whole shop. And uh, deployment itself was successful. It takes about 15 minutes. Uh, I was happy. Uh, and even it works uh, for about 20 minutes. Was uh, uptime was green, so I really relax this time. But suddenly, after 20 minutes, I see the uh, red color in the uptrends. Uh, something happens, something bad happens. Uh, I restart the core services. Uh, it helps, but only for 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, the pro problem happens again. Um, after that, I restart uh, facades uh, and marketplace service doesn't help at all. And in the result, I roll back the core order has my deployment, and it helps to repair the system. Um, after that, uh, fortunately, I'd be able to also to take uh, the thread dumps uh, uh, after the, the failure. And in the uh, uh, post-mortem, I analyze the thread dumps and it a bit or has I have idea what happens at least. Yeah. So the thread dump, a lot of threads hanging by ActiveMQ create session. So connection was uh, successful uh, created, but when the ActiveMQ try to create a session, it hangs. And a lot of threads are blocked in this state. Then I look what exactly was changed. Uh, there's, a, there's a, some ActiveMQ configuration. There is a URL uh, for, for broker, maximum connection. And there is a parameter maximum active session per connection was 10. There is a parameter concurrent consumer consumers. Uh, concurrent consumer basically is a parameter for listing uh, to uh, list to, to, to get the information with you in parallel. So it's not only one thread that gets the information as some threads. So in this case, it's 10. And I see was what changed. Um, five, uh, it was five before and now becomes 10. Uh, this was one of the changes in my deployment. Uh, looking at the code, how it's implemented. Um, as a message listener, just create a thread for concurrent consumer, and every thread gets a, uh, create a session from the connection, and then session create a consumer from destination and activate it. That's that message listener. After that, the consumer and session was closed, and interestingly, the, the connection was uh, uh, obtained from the pooled connection factor in this case. Um, the message sender site. It was, it used the same connection factor. So also create a connection, start the connection, create a session, create a producer, send the message and close all the things. Do you have already ideas what happens? What, why that kind of problems was here? Perhaps somebody has an idea and type here. Any ideas about that? Okay. Uh, the problem was, is basically, there are two problems. So the main problem was that the uh, message sender and message listener share the same pooled connection factory. It's a really, really bad idea. And what happens uh, exactly because of this change, it was five consumers before. And uh, uh, consumer gets the connection, create five session, and now it creates 10 session. And every connection is configured by maximum uh, active session in a 10. So just get all possible sessions, create a listeners, and return a connection back to the pool at close connection. Then uh, sender, uh, the message producer, comes in, in, in the game. And uh, it gets a connection and try to create a session here. And as far as soon as they get the session already used by, by listener, there are no any free session and just hangs on this place. So it happens not uh, immediately, but after some work, they just get such a session and more and more senders hanging and uh, basically the system stops to work. So the main problem here was to share the same pooled connection factory for sender and listener. And even for listener, it makes no sense at all because uh, for, uh, because it, uh, the life cycle of listener is the same as life cycle of whole container. It created the uh, session in the beginning and closed it in the, uh, in the end. Uh, so uh, it used connection for the whole life cycle. It makes no sense to use pool of connection here. So just 
can inject the native um, connection factory and, and use it. For sender, it makes sense because it's only short communication. It sends something in close, it turn connection to the pool. It can use bullet connection. Another problem, of course, uh, from ActiveMQ, it's a bit strange. It's a create, kind of create session has no timeout. So I, I just submit as a, as a bug and I have a default timeout after that. It's with a, with a user for exception because before it just hangs uh, forever. Yeah, so this is an interesting case what happens on the on the customer project. And after that, I look a bit more in detail how are there some formal or some patterns how to make the system more resilient and avoid such situation as it happens for me. Um, let's go to the definitions as uh, what is the system stability at all. So stability is a uh, uh, characteristic of the system or attribute of the system that they keeps processing transaction stays available even under some disruption impulses. So even if something bad happens with the network, with database, with asynchronous communication, some components failures, big load, but system still be able to proceed the transaction. Perhaps not in the 100% uh, uh, functionality. Yes, perhaps some features will be not available. Perhaps also some users will be blocked. But the most of user can you still use this. The system keeps useful. This is a stability definition. And availability is basically um, uh, derived um, terms from the stability and shows if the system is operational in time t. Of course, as the system stable, it's also available. Uh, important here to uh, also get that it's not really possible to uh, so. This regards how good your QA quality assurance is, um, the unit test level, integration test, system test, load test, but it's not possibly uh, not possible to completely avoid production failures. So you can you, you should you should somehow deal with that. Some problems in the production will happen so for sure. And every production failure is unique, but there are common ways to improve the system robustness. And exactly this was interesting for me how to do. It. Um, also, some formal stuff, what could happen with the system? There are some three uh, different kind of problems. The first is a fault. The fault is an incorrect internal state. It could be uh, caused by unexpected external system behavior or internal bug, but fault is not always bad. Uh, so for some fault you can deal, you can just uh, intercept that and uh, correct. There are two approaches how to do this fault is for tolerance and you try to catch it and continue to work despite a fault. Or another strategy is uh, fault intolerance. You propagate it as soon as possible on the top system. So some cases make sense as well. Uh, second error is observable incorrect behavior. So if you add something into the cart, but you still know have items, it's basically so some, some bugs in the system. And the last type of problem is a failure. That's a, the, uh, the worst uh, case that we would like to avoid is unresponsive system. So the system stops to proceed to user transaction and system mission cannot be accomplished. We can we try to avoid the, the last situation. Uh, let's go through the stability enterprise. So basically, anti patterns is the way to build the system or build architecture that make the problem even worse as before. Yeah, so if something bad happens, the architecture amplifies the problems, makes even even bad, I mean, even worse. The first anti-patterns is unprotected integration points. So uh, integration points is all uh, places in the system to communicate outside. It could be external service calls, could be low-level microservices, could be some as the case, remote SDKs and frameworks could be database access, could be messaging. So basically, all what goes outside is integration point. Why integration point is so important? Because sometimes external system produce not or behaves not as we expect. For example, this is expected behavior that the system, the external system, uh, has some bad gateway or internal server error, but instead external system just accepts the connection and Read the request, but, but your HTTP request was never read as hangs for undefined time. Or you expect some JSON response and uh, system produce some endless MP3 stream. Or even worse, you expect XML, application XML, and external system 
has produced inf infinite stream with open XML text. So it's a good test how robust your system. Therefore, uh, why, why it's so, so, so important to protect the integration points? Because uh, unprotected uh, integration points um, produce cascading failure. So let's imagine you have some microservices. Typically, you have some chain calls. So one microservice invoke another microservice. And you perhaps invoke some database or messaging system. And the database has all page, for example. And if, if your uh, integration point is not protected, the threads uh, using this database connection are uh, exhausted. So thread, all the threads from the thread pool are used. Uh, and uh, microserv the whole microservice is stopped to response. Uh, in other, in, a, uh, in, in turn, the microservices call, uh, the low level microservice has also connection uh, thread pool that also is hosted and also stopped response. And as uh, this case failure propagated vertically. So you have some le low level problems that very quickly propagated on the top and make your system unresponsive. How to deal with that, what we can do? The first, of course, protect your integration point with the patterns. So we'll look on some of that uh, uh, later, but it makes uh, a lot of sense to introduce timeouts at least. And I really recommend to protect integration points with circuit breaker uh, pattern. We'll look a bit more in details. Also asynchronous processing helps in some, some cases. It's not blocked, not uh, uh, so make a failure, to, uh, failure tolerance. Uh, of course, test for many form of failure makes sense, uh, not only expected uh, errors, but also, especially in the case when system, external system hangs and blocks the request. What happens with your system? Uh, fail fast make, make of course, sense. Uh, you should use retries as very carefully. So from my experience, retries makes in a lot of cases even worse. Yeah, so the image, uh, let's imagine the external system has a high load, a big load, and uh, therefore, uh, makes a response or uh, uh, response slowly, and what makes the clients it try to re uh, retry the request, retry and retry and retry. And so it's, instead, ten requests, external system uh, receive hundred or thousand, and have no chance to recover. So you make make situation even worse with retry. And of course, it makes sense to provide the trace information and tools to find the error. What exactly is cause of the of the of the, of the error? Uh, the next anti-pattern, so um, uh, the failure could propagate it uh, vertically, but unfortunately, it could propagate it horizontally as well. Right? So normally, uh, in the uh, modern systems, there uh, is on, not only one node when you deploy your microservice, but you have a number of nodes, number of instances, yeah, to ensure failover and load balance. And there is a load balancer. Uh, on top of that, and load balancer just redistribute, check the health of the instance and redistribute the request to the single instances. What happens if I have some bug, for example, memory leak or a deadlock in the code in one system and one, one node? My node is blocked. The load balancer uh, recognizes that, so tells it check doesn't work anymore. And load balancer redistributes the request to other servers. So in the result, other servers will receive more traffic. So at least in one search, traffic more. And in theory, they are independent these nodes, but in reality, the same software, the same microservice, you can send code base running on the old servers. And if you increase the traffic, probability that this error happens on the other instances as well are high. And very soon you will see that kind of situation. So the old servers are unavailable and system is unresponsive. Uh, what we can do against, uh, there is a pattern uh, with the name bulkhead, so it's a like in chip, then they isolate, even isolate the users, isolate some instances. Uh, is that even if uh, some instances have a problem, you still can uh, uh, serve, for example, most important users. Also makes sense to care about failures very quickly. Don't think that I have 12 nodes more, and if one fails, this, nothing happens. So it makes sense to uh, care about it automatically, so at least uh, restart it, and of course analyze what 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 really happens. So hunt for for a solution. Next anti patterns uh, 
basically I already showed on the on the, on the uh, first case what happens if I sh share a connection pool. The same basically with the thread pool. If my clients inside the application share the same thread pool, and uh, service C has a problem, as for example slow down, slow down or completely uh, outage, then uh, the client just client C use more and more threads, so more 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 threads waiting for resource C and just use all the threads from the thread pool. And as a result, client A and client B cannot uh, obtain their threads from thread pool as well. So instead of that, it makes sense to uh, separate the thread pool that every client has their own one. And in this case, even the client C and service C has a problem and client C has no uh, any uh, threads from, from, from thread pool, the client A and client B still works. Uh, the next anti-pattern, as uh, my, my favorite one, is uh, accessing to shared storage. So what happens in this case, uh, the, it's very, very typical for the customer who split in one only two microservices. There's a split in API, split in code, but uh, the most important is the splitting data. It's not a trivial task, it's quite difficult. And um, the customers are just are keep it uh, so keep the microservices accessing the same database and even worse they use join between the tables so the one microservices make a join for the table of other microservices it's really a bad idea bad idea for two reasons because of the teams should share data models so if the data model change from one team the next other team should adapt the things and the second reason why it's a bad, um, because uh, also in run, in, uh, it's runtime. Imagine the customer table has some lock, or you forget to add the index, and the card microservice immediately will uh, depend on that and influence by that as well. So affected by, by this problem. Uh, how to resolve this? Uh, there are some approaches, but one of them is. Uh, uh, to do it on the API level, so kind of API composer. In this case, you just uh, get necessary information from the service. Uh, for example, customer needs some information from the card, and API is responsible, API composer is responsible to get it from the API level and send through the API this information to the microservice. It works quite well if you have not a huge uh, amount of information and that not change it very, 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 very often. So more or less stable. If the information changed uh, very quickly, then perhaps makes sense to implement other solutions and the microservices uh, reflect all changes in the queue. So it just uh, make some updates in the card database and publish these updates into the queue and customer microservice listen for the queue and build by basically a copy of the card a table and push these changes there. Uh, in this case, of course, there's eventual consistency that uh, of course the changes will propagate it not uh, immediately, it's with some delay and it's possible to get a stale data from the customer. It depends on your use case, is it okay or not? And one step further uh, to implement, to implement uh, kind of event sourcing. Event sourcing quite interesting patterns. So in this case, you don't, uh, you're not only interested in the target state uh, in, in the database, in the table, but you uh, basically persist all steps. So you produce kind of immutable events. So for example, card created, item one added, item two added. All events are immutable, you cannot update them. You can just add the new one. And you persist the whole uh, stream of events. So basically, you master of, of information. So the stream of immutable events. In this case. If you like, for some customers, normally you publish in the messaging system like a Kafka or ActiveMQ. And if the customer, uh, if the consumer would like, is normally built kind of storage, materialized view, and replace these events, and they have a, a target state. Uh, when this uh, event, event sourcing uh, good uh, for the cases if you, for example, need the history, if you're interested not only the target state, you need the history of events. They're also very nice works for the concurrent modification because you normally you have no concurrent issues in this case. You just persist immutable events and replay. Uh, this advantage, of course, uh, the same is uh, some eventual consistency. So these events uh, uh, 
published takes some time to synchronize this in the view. But for some cases, uh, the event sourcing works, works very, very good. Uh, let's look, uh, this is about stability anti patterns. Let's look in the stability patterns as well. Um, the first and most important um, from my point of view is circuit breaker. What is the idea of circuit breaker? Uh, idea is the following. Uh, if the target system, so imagine you have a client and the server, and the server don't uh, answer, for example, for five requests. So all five requests has a timeout. Uh, then you make an uh, assumption that very very probably uh, the server doesn't answer for, will not answer also for six, for request number six. Uh, and therefore you say, okay, now circuit breaker is active after five uh, requests are failed and all other requests will be rejected immediately. So you don't communicate with the target server at all. And what you do, either you return the failure on the client immediately, but without timeout immediately, or you make a, some fallback solution. So for example, typical case in the e-commerce, you have a prices yeah, and nice to communicate with the price servers. But if the price service is not available, you just get the prices from the cash. Perhaps they get stale, but your system can continue to work. Why circuit breaker is so important and so nice uh, from my point of view. Yeah, so we also see the three uh, states of the circuit breaker. Normal is a closed state as a normal function, the uh, external server response. If uh, there's normally configuration of threshold, so if you exceed the threshold, um, reach the threshold, circuit breaker goes into the open state and all uh, requests are rejected immediately. So either you return the fallback or zero. After configured time, you try again the external system and if it is it available again, uh, you go to the closed state. If it's not available, return back to the open state. So this is circuit breaker works. Why it's so good and so important? Uh, because even the small timeout sometimes is critical for the system. So you have a high load and every request to wait on timeout is not acceptable. So could break to help, help just fail fast or provide a fallback solution. Another uh, feature effect of circuit breakers that's also very important for me, it's relax the target server. So normally why the target server has a problem because a load, peak load, for example. Yeah? And if you make it a try, you make problem even worse. And circuit breaker stops communication. So the target server has a possibility, has uh, an option to uh, so to uh, be healthy again, uh, to uh, restart or uh, replace the things and uh, you give a chance to target server to recover. Um, it's fundamental pattern to protect your integration points. Uh, makes sense also to configure alarm and monitoring circuit breaker activation. You see in the monitoring system if circuit breaker is active, then very probably something happens with the target system is communicating to. Uh, there are a lot of configuration parameters you see. You can configure a threshold, you can configure a timeout, you configure a number of threads, you configure the time uh, and circuit breaker goes into half often state. Uh, it makes sense to configure for endpoints manually and tune a bit. So there's a different load with different endpoints and the parameters should be config configured carefully. And there is nice circuit breaker third party implementation like uh, uh, Netflix Hystrix, for example, is not supported anymore, but it still works very stable. I still use it. Or you can take its implementation from the resilience for J if you like to have the, the last uh, things. Uh, I will make a short demo how the quick break case works. I just uh, change my screen sharing. Change entire screen shortly. So I have uh, two services. Very simple case. Uh, the composite service just calls the basic service, and composite service uh, is protected by Hystrix uh, circuit breaker. So there's a configuration of Hystrix circuit breaker with uh, fallback and um, Z pool command key configuration. So I just start. 
basic application first. And start the composed application as well. Okay, perfect. Now uh, I make it just uh, core of the composite service and let's see what is returned back. The first call takes some time. Uh, even has a timeout, but now it's answered. Um, it's just returned the uh, response from the basic service. And what I do now, I uh, stop basic service. But you see it returns his takes timeout exception. It, it's wait sometimes, so it has a big delay. But after some invocation, ah, now circuit break is open. You see, I have immediately response. I see the exception that circuit breaker is open. And if I wait some time, uh, it will retry uh, and has a timeout again. Ingress is about 10 seconds. Yeah, now it has a timeout again. And if I start now my basic service, So it works again. So this is a circuit breaker works. Very important is here. So I have immediate response either with here or I can provide some default fallback response. For example, take the things from the cache, uh, something like this. This is fundamental pattern, which I really recommend to look to make your system resilient and stable. So I share again my presentation. So how um, integrate Hystrix in the Spring Boot? Um, it's quite easy. You can just create a starter, add a, a cloud starter in the uh, Spring Boot and provide annotation. It's also possible to integrate with, with the ZXF. Uh, ZXF is a bit more work, but still quite, quite easy. Uh, just wrap your call of the service into the Hystrix command, you create a Hystrix command with a configuration and just wrap your, your call here. Uh, and you either make a um, execution, synchronous execution or asynchronous using future, or you can also make a reactive uh, with some handler, call handler, uh, and receive the response here. So it's very nice integrated in the ZXF and it's been boot even easier. Uh, the next pattern is a bulkhead. Uh, this is a pattern that protect uh, horizontal propagation of the error. This could be applied in different levels. I really recommend to do it always in the connection pool level, third pool. But sometimes it even makes sense to do it on the container level. That's, uh, for example, some important clients, very important clients dedicated to the separate service instances. Uh, so client two and client three are very, let's say, very important. They have dedicated service instances only for these clients. And even you have problem because of client requests, be cloned on the others, the client two and client three still continue to work. So sometimes it makes sense to uh, bulk it and uh, route some customers to the dedicated instance pool of the service. Um, asynchronous communication is also nice pattern that I always uh, recommend to use. Uh, the synchronous communication is nice and really, really easy to implement. 
but uh, the problem is synchronous communication that the service should should wait uh, for the response and in some cases it has a blocked thread of course we have this uh, new communication we can uh, make a thread three and provide a resume for the resume response later but still your service depends uh, on the uh, service true on the response uh, asynchronous communication helps to resolve this problem. For example, if uh, the throughput of service to service to have some slowdown and cannot proceed all messages with the send. Uh, in this case, the message is just accumulated in the queue and when service to is available again, it's just proceeds the messages. And even the service, is service two is completely uh, down, you still, the service one still continue to work and or just, just put the, the messages to the queue. Of course, it, only for solution for some times. Uh, if you if if it always down in one day, you have over, over so overload, overwhelm of the queue, and you still have a problem. But for some time for peak loads and for short uh, outages, it's really helpful to, to have a synchronous communication. Um, as I said, though, so it's really helpful for dump and spread spiking load. And it opens also some com other communication patterns like PubSub and you publish and propagate uh, the message to broadcast uh, for, for, for some con consumers, not only with, for a single one. Uh, unfortunately, asynchronous communication is not a free lunch. Uh, you need normally to redesign a bit the system, different architectural style. Also, sometimes it implies a business rule that not uh, answers immediately or make some eventual consistency and of course this adds complexity to tracing and debugging and necessary to normally administrate and set up additional messaging uh, broker like a kafka repetitive queue active um, as a big conclusion what is a stability goal is so the typical situation that we have a failure some external service stopped to responding Thread pool is hosted and system architect implies the failure. So it makes basically the problem uh, critical. And the system stops to response and no features are available at all. This is a bad case. What we would like to achieve, that's basically the same uh, beginning is the same. The failure is triggered, the external server stops to response. But the system architects are somehow to dump the fault. So we have used this patterns like circuit breaker, bulk heads, asynchronous communication, event sourcing to dump the fault. And perhaps you, uh, not all 100% of the feature is available. Not uh, all users are served, but your system still works and most of the features are available and the system is still, still useful. And uh, the rest of the features remain unaffected. And of course, quite important to uh, provide a possibility to recover, analyze the uh, issue quickly, or auto recover the things or restart uh, uh, the nodes and make this, uh, the server available in the uh, or system in the full 100% functionality back again. So, conclusion uh, very important to understand, uh, as well as it was uh, axiom for me, that it is not possible. This regards how good your QA is, how much test you're running, but you still have some problems on the production. You have unreliable networks, we have dependency of the external system, payment system, some uh, uh, data external databases, uh, cloud providers, and outages happens in the production. Uh, therefore, you need for the system to be, to be prepared for the failure, embrace the failures. And this could be achieved to uh, use, apply some stability patterns and avoid some stability anti-patterns. Uh, also important uh, to consider stability not when the system already in production, it's a bit too late, but in the architecture and design phases, uh, it makes sense uh, to think a bit how to make your system resilient and stable and robust. This is basically all from the presentation. Perhaps you have some questions that I would like to. Let's look. Okay, there are some comments about my, my example. Mm -hmm. 
Why is the connection not introduced? Is a try connection catch? Yeah, but the problem is not a connection. Connection is still 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 uh, uh, getting is not exception by get connection. The problem is the connection has a limited number of session, and if I try to get a session, it just hangs. So the try catch don't really helps in this case. Yeah, so it makes yeah, so close makes sense. Oh, it's a good good question. Uh, how do you test um, your resiliency measures across microservices? Uh, so normally I have uh, I do it on the uh, either on the integration test level or on system test level. It's quite difficult to uh, do it on the unit test because you mock normal external system, but to integration test and system test you can. Uh, simulate some 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 problems on the external system. For example, uh, if system not available and return uh, failure immediately is not a problem. But uh, the worst case if the external system hangs or don't return anything. And this is a nice case. You just put the timeout, well, the, the big big timeout on the on the server side. Simulate uh, the not responding or hanging on the external system, and try to. Uh, increase the load uh, on your uh, method, for example, in your end, uh, endpoint, and see what happens. Either your system also hangs and uh, beginning to respond very slowly, or completely hangs, uh, or it provides some useful fallbacks, or at least fail faster. It's, uh, fail faster is even better as a hanging system. At least the customer see some errors, and perhaps. Uh, the, some percentage of the customer still can uh, works, but 30 or 50 percent of the customer will receive our uh, errors quickly. Uh, some other questions. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, called resilience for J. Yeah, Hystrix not deprecate. I already said it. Yes, it's like Hystrix not supported anymore, but still, it's very stable, a good solution, very good documented. So I still use the Hystrix in my uh, system if I have no good reasons to uh, replace it. Yes, uh, it's, uh, I already said so it's a resilience for J that basically uh, follow follow our system of the, of the Hystrix, but um, I. Like Hystrix implementation, I still use it. Yeah, so why not? Even if it's not supported, um, but if it's stable and good documented, it works. It's uh, also an option. Uh, some other questions. The Quebec looks very similar to High Cluster, and not really. Uh, so it's um, high availability cluster. Uh, just distribute your requests to, to another instance. This is the idea of a high availability cluster. But circuit breaker uh, recognize is basically similar behavior like circuit breaker in your elect uh, so electro chain. If, if you have some uh, uh, short circuit, uh, it just breaks the connection completely. It happens with circuit breaker. So you stop the commun communication with external system, stop com stops completely, and either provide a fallback or a uh, error in this case. OK, any, any more questions? I think we're already a bit out of time, 25, 45 minutes there. Yeah. Okay, so that, thanks a lot for your attention. And uh, if you have some question during the conference, I will be available uh, tomorrow and on Thursday. You can also ask me, uh, ping me, ask me, find me, and link and uh, link it in. Or, uh, so thanks a lot and have a nice day. The rest of conference and bye bye.